Hey everyone! In this mini-series, we're going to build a few surprisingly fun and useful circuits using no microcontrollers, just good old transistors. In this video, I am going to build a transistor multivibrator circuit and then completely mess with it in every possible way. A multivibrator is one of the most iconic transistor circuits out there. It's somewhat similar to the flip-flop I built in my previous video. Only one transistor can be on at a time, and when one turns on, it forces the other off. But this time we've got capacitors in the mix, and that's where the fun begins. These capacitors make the circuit oscillate. As soon as one of them charges up, it changes the feedback path and forces the transistor to swap states. Then the other capacitors take its turn, charging, discharging, back and forth forever. Basically, it's an endless electronic argument. Now an interesting quirk. Multivibrators don't always behave nicely in simulators. If both sides of the circuit are perfectly identical, it will just sit there, doing absolutely nothing. Just an perfectly balanced pendulum, at rest state. In reality, component tolerance are never perfect. Resistors and capacitors always differ slightly, and that tiny imbalance is enough to kick the oscillation into motion. So in simulation, you actually have to fake imperfection to make it work, just like life. We are used to emulators giving us perfect mathematical results, while the real world is full of messy tolerance and noisy behavior. But with a multivibrator, it's the other way around. As you can see here, my simulated version blinks a bit weird timing that the emulator struggling to be real. Meanwhile, the real circuit on the breadboard runs beautifully and stable, thanks to those tiny natural imperfections in the components. Reality wins this round. Now, by changing the resistors or capacitor values, we can control the blink rate. And if you make the two sides asymmetric, you can get short flashes instead of even blinking. Great for effects or signal generation. But let's get practical and connect some loads. I will start with LEDs, so we can actually see what's going on. If you connect an LED in parallel with the transistors, most of the current just burns away. It's not great. That's because the transistor effectively short circuits the LED when it turns on. You can fix this by lowering the collector resistors, but that increases total current draw. That's not efficient. Connecting LEDs in series doesn't help either. It prevents the capacitor from discharging properly, and the circuit stops oscillating. So what do we do? We build a driver stage. Here is the idea. We add one more transistor as a power amplifier between the emitter and ground. I explained this setup in a previous video about connecting loads to a microcontroller. The base emitter junction acts just like a diode, with a voltage drop of about 0.6 volts. Earlier we defined that as a drawback and avoided the short circuit by adding extra resistor. This time that actually a good thing. It lets the multivibrator do its multivibrating job, while the extra transistor handles the heavy lifting. Let's go a quick calculation. My circuit runs at 3 volts. Two AA batteries or a single lithium ion cell. Voltage drop across the collector emitter junction is about 0.1 volts. Base emitter drops 0.6 volts. That leaves around 2.3 volts across the lower resistor. Within a 1K resistor, that's about 2.3 mA base current. 
The SS8050 transistors has a DC current gain of roughly 200, so the circuit can handle up to about half an amp of load. Pretty solid. Now if we hook a small speaker as a load and increase the blinking frequency, we'll get sound. By changing one of the base resistors, we can alter the tone. That's right, we'll just build a transistor musical instrument. Each button connects a different resistor value, changing the frequency and producing different notes. But there is a catch. When no button is pressed, the base of one transistor floats, keeping it permanently on while the other is off. That means if you connect the speaker to the wrong side, it will constantly draw DC current, heating it up and possibly killing it. So always connect it to the transistors whose base goes through the disconnected resistor. That way the speaker only gets AC. Real sound, not cooked copper. Alright, time to make another funny thing. Let's build a second multi-vibrator, but this time with PNP transistors. The circuit is mirrored. The emitters now go to positive instead of ground. And all the polarities are flipped. I also increased all resistor values tenfold. This slows down the blinking and reduces power consumption. Perfect for battery operation. Finally, I connect two LEDs, red and blue. Their anodes go to the PNP collectors and cathodes to the NPN collectors through a resistors. Now only one LED lights at a time depending on which transistor's pair is active. It's a fully transistorized polystrobe light. You can scale it up with power transistors and bright LEDs, ideal for DIY toys or light effects. And finally, one more fun variation of this circuit. What if instead of just two transistors taking turns, we add a third one into the game? I'm not even sure that's the right name for it. Try vibrator? Does that even sound legal? Each state feeds the next through a capacitor, so the on states keep circulating. Transistor 1 triggers 2, 2 triggers 3, and 3 triggers back to 1. And guess what? You'll just build a simple model of a traffic light. Each transistor can drive its own LED. Red, yellow, green. Blinking in perfect sequence. It's a neat demonstration of timing and phase shift. 
and a great way to visualize how sequential logic works, using nothing more than a few transistors and capacitors. So that's the transistor multivibrator, the humble heart of so many circuits, from oscillators to toys and alarms. What would you build with it? Let me know in the comments, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe, more blinking madness is on the way.